Well, hello, welcome again to a reading through of Iliad book 22. And I got up to the beginning of the speech of Andromache, which is uh, 477. So Andromache's speech um, has a pattern to it, as often Homer does. There's a, an ABA pattern structure here. The first part of it is addressed to the deceased, even though, of course, he's being dragged off back to the ships of the Achaeans. The second part is a narrative about the anticipated sufferings of their son. And this particular, these lines have, in fact, been suspect from antiquity and contain many rare words. I had to look up quite a few. And uh, the final bit, then, is to address to the deceased again to close it off. And it's a very sad ending to the whole book, but one of the climaxes uh, of, of course, the death of Hector is one of the climaxes of the entire work. So she says, Hector ego dustenos. Oh, Hector, I am dustenos. I am wretched. Uh, Gignometh, we, um, well, it's both of us, we well, we are in the same fate, so we have met the same fate. Perhaps we were born for the same fate, might be better for the um, Gignamai here. So both of us were born for the same fate. This is that um, uh, funny word here meaning the same. It's um, used a few times in Homer. Sue men, and now we get a men and... Um, Hopefully we're going to get a de, uh, but I don't think we do. So you, on the one hand, well, the men is replaced with an outer in the next line. It's a slight variation. So you, uh, in Troy, in the house of Priam, but I, uh, in, th uh, in Thebe, under uh, wooded placker, in the house of Aetion, who reared me when I was Tupthon, when I was little. And then we get this Dus Moros and I Nomeron. So the first one's referring to her and the second one to Hector. So I, with a terrible, with a, uh, I ill fated, and you with a terrible fate, with an Inos Moros. Hos may ophili tekestai. Would that uh, understand we had not been born? Perhaps I had not been born or we had not been born. Nunde, but now you, um, and we do get a men here, and the de is probably, um, well, again, the, the men is probably answered by the outar here again. So, but you. You have gone below the depths of the earth into the houses of Hades. But you have left me in hateful grief as a Karen, as a widow in Megaroisi in the halls. Pius deti napios autos. Um, so the the child or the, our son is still just a napios, a little baby. The boy whom we bore, you and I, uh, and we were dus amoroi, ill fated. Uti nor, and we get Uti Uti, so neither will you be, this is the second person, uh, it contracts in later Greek to essay, but here it's, it's the uncontracted second person, singular from the verb to be, so you will be, O Hector, so neither will you be an, on, an onera of any benefit tuto to him, this is um, 
you also get onesis for benefit. It's connected with the verb oninami. So neither will you be any benefit to him, O Hector, since you are dead, nor he to you. Now I mentioned before that, that these lines from um, 487 have uh, been suspected from antiquity and contain many rare words. Uh, on the other hand, they do fit nicely in the structure that seems to be there. So um, I leave it to the commentaries to debate whether it's uh, a later interpolation or not. A n pergar polymon. Uh, for indeed, if so, for if indeed. Fuge, and there's a little iota, didn't come out very well there. So uh, he might escape this war with the Achaeans. This war with brings many tears. So if he might escape this war, which bring uh, with the Achaeans, which brings many tears. Continually, uh, indeed, for him, in fact. Uh, there will be ponos kaikadia opiso. There will be uh, labour or hardship, perhaps, and griefs. This is a neuter plural here. We do get a plural verb, uh, which is slightly odd because um, this is neuter plural, but we have got various different things, so they've got a plural verb here. You often just get a singular verb and sort of structure here. Uh, so, but there will be um, uh, labour and griefs for him, opiso hereafter, for many men, ap urisusi, this is one of these uh, rare verbs here, it, it probably means something like to rob him of his aruras, his ploughed lands, his tilled lands. The verb may have the sense of the, the oros in here may have to do with uh, taking away the boundary stones. Uh, in other words, boundary stones were used to mark off what was your property and what belonged to the person next door. So that may be one of the roots here. It's generally translated as um, others, other men will rob the lands and dated of the possessor, so his lands, uh, his um, ploughed lands, Amir day, and the, well, Amir, it must be this day, perhaps, so this day will place the boy as an orphan, and pan af helica, another extremely rare word, in fact, it's only here in all of Greek, it's probably made up of pan plus apo plus helix, so, to completely take him away from companions of the same age. So, to cut him, to cut off uh, from him his equal in years. So, to cut him off from his contemporaries. So, this day will place the boy as an orphan, cut off from his contemporaries, Another rare word here we get hupom mene muke, another unexplained form. Presumably this is from some verb hoop a muo, which is something like to bow the head, um, perhaps to cast one's eyes downwards, to have downcast eyes. Um, and the panta is in every way. So he will he will be completely downcast. And his cheeks, uh, this is a perfect here from Dacruo, um, will be, um, his cheeks literally have been or in a state of being covered with tears. So we might just say his cheeks covered with tears. Du ominos, uh, this is from De Amita Lac. Uh, so being in need, perhaps, so lacking, well, either lacking a father or lacking the status and the, the time and the wealth that goes with having a, a father. It's almost begging here. So being in need, um, the 
Pius the boy and Aisin will approach this is that Amy Ibo so we'll go we'll go up to the comrades of his father so we'll approach the comrades of his father the uh, Amy Ibo in Homer often doesn't have a future sense but it seems to have here uh, we get Alon men Alon de construction here Eruon is sort of dragging or tugging on the cleano the mantle of one and the tunic of another um, and but of those who have taken pity on him a certain one Epeske will hold Tutthon will pro probably briefly I think it here will briefly hold a Kotulan this is a little cup uh, a little cup and on the one hand he will moisten his lips but he will not li literally moisten um, another rare word here only here in poetry that his palate this is the top part of his mouth so the verb here is deino is deino to wet or moisten and this is probably a proverbial line meaning something like um, he will give him just enough to wet his lips but not to quench his thirst so he will moisten his lips but he will not wet uh, his palate literally uh, another rare word here uh, amphithalase another debated word it means flourishing on both sides and it pro possibly there's various different interpretations it may mean something like one who has both parents alive so he's flourishing on both sides both his mother and his father others take it to mean just flourishing in all ways but uh, I quite like the former sense so, um, so a man who has both his parents alive estufelixe from stufelizdo to strike or to smite uh, so we'll strike him or perhaps almost shove him out from the feast this is a genitive so one who has both parents alive will drive him out from the feast Peplegos from Placer, so having struck him with his hands and in this zone reproaching him with insults with reproaches from Oned, um, Onedos on, must be Onedios here so we'll re and reproaching him with uh, insults Error Hutos get lost go away Usos gepate meta denutai hemin. Indeed, uh, your father does not share with us in the feast. From meta uh, dinumai. Now, th this was perhaps important in the sense that um, in some of these feasts you were supposed to bring your own. Um, contribution or if you were to make a contribution he doesn't have a father who's doing that and so they tell him to go away from the feast because he's not his father is not contributing to it so your father does not join in the feasts with us doc uh, uh, Ace in tears the boy we get Anasi again will go up into or go to his widowed mother so his mother who is a care a widow then they name the boy Astuanax which is the boy's name who um, previously are on the knees of his father so the hepu is that personal adjective again agreeing with father so who um, previously on the knees of his father Edeske, this is an iterative from that ed root from, connected with estheo, who used to eat uh, only muelon, well, this is something like a marrow, and the rich fat of sheep. In other words, he was well fed. 
so he used to sit on the knees of his father and he used to eat only, because perhaps he was fussy, he used to only eat marrow and the rich fat of sheep. Outer, but hoth, for hot air, when sleep might take him, from errors from high re o, and he might cease, uh, napia cuon, pl the participle, um, playing, it's a fairly rare word, but means playing, so when he might cease from his play, he used to lie, so this is looking at the past, so he used to eat rich food, but when sleep took him and he ceased from his playing, he used to sleep on beds in the arms of the nurse, dated plural here, uh, on a soft bed, having filled from pimpla, M. Pimplamy, having filled his care, here it's heart, I think, Thalion, uh, with sumptuous things. A fairly rare word, the, the, the scoliast uh, glosses it as something like of, of nourishment and lots of nice things to eat. Others take it to mean good cheer. Uh, I think it's sumptuous things is probably quite good here. So having filled his heart with sumptuous things, a genitive. But now uh, he suffers, or he would suffer, I should say, with Arne. But now he would suffer many things. The apple is a preverb with the hamartone, having lost his dear father. And he names him again Astuanax, because that was an, a nickname given to him by the Trojans. So Astuanax, whom the Trojans call, so whom the Trojans call Astuanax as an epiclesis, as a sort of nickname. For uh, Eruso, this is an aorist middle, for you alone um, kept safe for them the gates and the high walls, the long walls. Nunde, but now, and now we're going, we've had this long description of the miseries that are going to happen to the sun. Of course, we, the audience, knows that Astuanax, in fact, doesn't survive the taking of Troy. He gets thrown over the parapet and killed once Troy is taken. So he actually, it's, again, it's a very deep irony here. He doesn't actually suffer all of the things mentioned above that at the hands of uh, being poor and at the hands of his fellows. Uh, as to Anax, in fact, gets killed by the Greeks once Troy is taken. So it's quite ironic, the whole thing here. And having completed that, she then goes back and um, readdresses the dead once again. But now... Um, now, the I Oli Uli, it's almost on a, on a matter poetic, but it's quite grim. It's the wriggling maggots. The wriggling maggots um, will eat you beside the beaked ships, nosvi tokeo, and away from your parents. Since the dogs would have their fill, from Korenumi, since the dogs would have their fill and they will do this all to you, Gumnon, naked. So the Gumnons are going back with the set a couple of lines earlier. So you could take that back with the set. So, but now, uh, beside the beach ships, away from your parents, the wriggling uh, worms will eat you naked. Um, it's almost whenever the dogs have had their fill, um, have sated themselves. Atta, but um, uh, yeah. So haimata um, get new to plural, and we get a plural verb. Uh, so haimata uh, uh, um. Uh, clothes, so garments, but there were garments lie in the halls, um, lepta, 
thin and beautiful, made by the hands of women, but indeed I will burn all of these things, Puri Kaleo, in burning fire, um, indeed they're of use in no way to you, so they're in fact of no use to you, since um, you will not um, lie in them, or you will not, uh, uh, so, so their garments perhaps, they could be uh, rugs and things, but literally you will not lie in them, but now I think we have to understand this verb again, cataflex, so I will burn them to be an object of glory to the Trojan men and Trojan women. And that's the end of her speech. And the whole book ends very sadly with Hos Fate Claus Epides Stenakon to Gunaikes. And thus she spoke weeping and the women, and we get a preverb here, uh, were groaning, well, perhaps around her, or perhaps as well, in addition to. So the women were groaning uh, as well. And that's the very sad end of book 22 of the Iliad.